hi everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. I also want to start by extending my thanks to the gallery, everyone, the amazing crew that helps this. I mean, this show is like not a one person effort, <laughs> if you can't tell. Um, so I'm really appreciative that you've given all this work a, a new home. Um, and I'm just going to tell you briefly what you're standing in tonight. And then I can take a few questions if anyone is, has particulars that they're curious about. As Tally mentioned, this was one work, now it's nine. This was a piece that I made for the Moody Center of the Arts in uh, Houston. It's a new, uh, relatively new art center on Rice campus. Um, and I've been working in installation for a little while now, particularly uh, installations that reference the natural world. So as Tally mentioned too, I'm from Maine. I grew up in the woods and on the water and um, nature has just never really left me and my work as an artist so even when i try to flee away from it it always keeps coming crawling back and so um for the moody i really wanted to kind of give the sensation that the environment was taking over an interior space so bringing the outside in um just a interesting a thing that I think is interesting to reveal is that I don't look at a lot of imagery in actual nature a actually nature kind of freaks me out to a certain extent uh, I'll just I mean it's true I, I yeah I get like freaked out and upset when I'm having to deal with creepy crawlies and all of that so I look at a lot of other artists iterations of the natural world so specifically I look at a lot of like 1900s imagery and earlier and what I like about that so it's a lot of like printed um, you know prints of flora and fauna what I like about that is because before kind of um, the dominance of the camera everything was documented by hand so you get a lot of human error in what was recorded in the natural world which I actually think makes for a lot of really interesting imagery um, it's sort of part natural documentation and part fantasy um, and so that's the world that I pull from when I'm making my own iterations of those um, environments. So uh, looking at a lot of early printmakers and early naturalists who are drawing the natural world by hand. Um, so this piece, uh, the way that I work is pretty improv. Um, they're really like collages is probably the best thing to call them. Um, they're hybrids in the sense that I make all of these pieces are kind of individual um, uh, movable drawings or paintings. And then I bring them to the space and start to find the form in the space itself. So when I arrived, some of the work had already um, been put together uh, because it was in another installation just right before this. But then I sort of found my um, edges as I worked in the space itself. So. There's a lot of improv. I don't plan things. I really don't like plans. They don't work for me, um, so I stay away from them. Um, and the other thing that is kind of new for me uh, and exciting for that reason is that this work in its original um, installation was meant to be performed in. So I've been looking at a lot of like early opera and stage designs and uh, sets. Um, also from kind of the 1900s and earlier, a lot of these came from thinking about um, like Voyage to the Moon, early Melier films, some of you may know, um, uh, The Impossible Journey. And so they are, you can find if you look carefully, there are little wheels if you look towards the ground level. Um, so these are actually on movable carts and in the Moody they were meant to be actually performed in. So all of this work came together in, and to one giant set design essentially. And I invited, we had puppeteers and um, costume designers come in and basically use the work as a springboard for creating new work of their own. And then it was performed in the space itself. Um, and so that's where the kind of stage wagon uh, design comes in, um, is that they are meant to be performative in a way. Um, what else should I say? Maybe I should take some questions. People have some questions? I'll keep going if I don't take questions. Am I forgetting something important to talk about? <laughs> um, how, how long did it take to create this piece? I mean, again, I encourage everyone to look online and look at images of the actual installation. And we have pictures here, but all of these pieces were connected into one enormous <coughs> installation. And I, 
I mean, this is extremely labor intensive work. And, and yeah. How, and we talk about done by hand versus yeah. done by computer. Right. There are a lot of fabricators in our world now, and di digital technology is used quite a bit. And as you get close to these, they look pristine and perfect when you look at them across the room, and as you get close, you definitely right. see Natasha's hand. And, and that's a deliberate. It is. Choice of yours. Yeah, so that's a good thing to mention. Um, so I worked on this piece um, for probably about six months before I took it to the initial space where it grew. Um, and then I worked in that space for a month. Um, there was a lot of painting done directly on the wall. There was um, painting and vinyl on the floor. So the piece kind of spilled out beyond the bounds of the wall, which is a little different from how you see it here. Um, but as Tali was say, is saying, um, it is all, I, I'm really like, I hate plans. I can't stress that enough. So, and I like, because I make a lot of my decisions in the moment of the making, I have to be the one cutting and drawing. It's, it's really like, I can't, um, I can't farm that out to anyone else. So, and, and I enjoy the laborious process as well. Um, so everything is painted by hand. Um, I do paint through, uh, if you're curious, I, I paint through essentially what's like gigantic masking tape. And what that does is um, as I cut the tape and then paint through that cut, it gives a really sharp edge. And the sharp edge is important because as much of the, as these are rooted in the natural world, they also come out of like the cartoon world and um, children's book illustrations. Those are also really textile design. Those worlds are very important to me as well. Um, and so I like them to be kind of a hybrid of the artificial and the natural together. And so cutting and painting through a mask is what gives me, relates me back to that cartoon world. But yeah, they're painted and I cut the material by hand too. The only things I actually didn't cut, which is rare for me, are the three dimensional pieces, um, the little uh, sprout, uh, seedling here and then the its sister in the other room um, but I like using material that I can actually manipulate in the studio myself anyone else have any yeah um, when you're working on a piece like this do you focus on like a particular region for and fauna or do you kind of pull from everywhere I pull from everywhere I like I like that it's um, impossible like you know this is this is possible here but not possible in the world the natural world is amazing in its own right. Like you don't have to do anything. It's already more amazing than we can ever make it, in my opinion. So what I do is, is something totally different. Like I just ping pong around the world and time and come up with my own impossible gardens, basically. Yes. Are you underwater? Yes. Uh, yes. I am from a family of fishermen, so even underwater life is always in the studio even when i don't want it to be again it's something that always winds its way back in um, but what i love particularly about underwater life in particular is that that it's the the motion of the water what that does to the the um the flora or the fauna it just makes it's it attributes this kind of amazingly magical movement to the item, to the, to the object and, or to the life. And um, I love that because a lot of these are about trying to show something that, yeah, it's static, but it feels like it could be in process of bloom or transformation. I'm always trying to kind of hit a, a composition that feels like it's in flux as best as I can. And, and what I like about that imagery is that art, you know, it is, it's, it's never static. So yes, is the short answer to your question. Yeah. Can you name any of the plants that are inspirations for what you do? Uh, no, <laughs> no, I cannot. Nope, nope. I could, I, I mean, I could, I, um, by sight, I'm pretty like I can, I could point to the, you know, if I had the book with me, I could open the page and show you like a drawing that I was pulling from, but. I'm not, um, I'm not a studious naturalist. I appreciate nature, but I'm not, um, yeah. And, and you know, some of these you can see, I think the, the influence of a printed version a little bit more, like with the four leaf, um, the giant black and white leaves, that has a relationship to like, if you look at early woodblock prints, there's a relationship to that mark that ends up appearing in my painting, drawing, whatever you want to call it as well. But yeah, no.
Yeah. How long did it take you to complete this installation? I was here four, four days, five days, four, five days, five days. Yeah. I had a head start because a lot of, like, so basically these, there's carts here that I kind of started with first. And so that the carts had been kind of composed and that work, creative work I'd already figured out. And so that was like a, a kind of a burden that had been lifted. And then it was just figuring out like, how am I gonna get these things to sprawl? What kind of space are they gonna occupy? How, are we gonna, how am I gonna divvy them up? Um, but some of the work was done ahead of time, which I think made five days po a possible feat. How long did it take you to paint the these flowers here? They're kind of, sometimes they're fast, sometimes they're slow. Um, so because like with a flower, with, with these leaves, for example, they get cut first. And so I make my drawing, I cut it out and then I paint it. And so it's really three processes rolled into one to arrive at the final image. Um, and so if the cutting is intricate, it takes a little bit longer, but you'd be, su I mean, hopefully I'm not destroying any mystery, but sometimes they can come together very quickly. Sometimes I hit one and it's like, it just, you know, I belabor it. It doesn't ever, then it goes in the back. <laughs> it becomes part of it, but it doesn't get, it doesn't get the front stage. So, yeah, yeah. The piece in North Park? Yeah. This process you've described, did you do it that way too, up above Macy's? <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit of a, yes, tree, <laughs> yes, yes, for better or worse, yes, basically. That piece I had, um, I had shown before in a museum, um, so I had kind of a sense of like how it might, how it went together in the past that I could kind of riff off of. But yeah, it, there was a lot of improv in that, which you know is complicated when you're like. Stables and then everything else. <laughs> yeah. Because you're at. You're, you're like on genie lifts and yeah. Since we're both starting in the air working. Between 9 p.m. at 9 and 4 a.m. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you all. We're going to go to the project. How are you? Thank you. Thank you, everyone.